Mm. And welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm reviewing Coyote Ragtime Show, which feels to me kind of like Cowboy Bebop's younger brother. I mean that as a compliment. Cowboy Bebop was a rare alignment of all sorts of positive forces. And Coyote Ragtime Show's crew appears to be going for a similar vibe. A big action show set in space with a small time crew on the shadier side of the law going after a big score. Coyote Ragtime Show is instead centered on a heist and it forgoes Bebop's episodic style in favor of a fast-moving story arc with a mad cast of characters. You have the larger-than-life leader, the hotshot pilot, the nervous techie, and the strong-willed little girl. Facing them are an implacable detective, her naive assistant, a cruel space pirate, and a dozen gun-toting android girls who all wear gothic Lolita outfits. I know! And that highlights the big difference between Coyote Ragtime Show and, say, Cowboy Bebop. Coyote has a much lighter tone that feels more like an early James Bond movie. Think of a show that's kind of all mushroom samba, but with a long plot. Now, I realize I'm spending a lot of my time here comparing Coyote Ragtime Show to Cowboy Bebop, and comparisons are usually poor reviews. I'm doing this because Ragtime Show came out a few years after Bebop, at least over here in the West, and it was panned by a lot of viewers for being too much like Cowboy Bebop. First off, isn't that an endorsement? Secondly, Coyote Ragtime Show is best appreciated on its own. It's in the grand tradition of Lupin III, an outlaw star. Big, bold stories with big, bold characters. Are there serious moments? Absolutely. Do the characters evolve? A little. Do the writers make points about life and living it? A couple. Meanwhile, you get spaceship battles, grinning crooks, gunfights, ridiculous disguises, and daring escapes. What actually struck me most about Coyote Ragtime Show was the quality of its editing and direction. Quiet sequences move at a leisurely pace, while action sequences jump from shot to shot, which is very expensive in animation, and they just drive at this relentless pace. The art is also held to a similar level of quality. The characters are rarely off-model, and the colors are bold but not garish. Interestingly, the series kind of alternates between stock anime poses and more naturalistic movement. It's very much like the writers understood when to be bold and over the top, and when to be more naturalistic. I felt it worked very well. As a 12-episode action series, there's not much time for character development and we get about as much of that as one can reasonably manage in this length of time. This is good. It's an action show, and it delivers on its action without trying to spread itself too thin. The story does build towards a big showdown climax at the end, although sadly it glosses over the big heist details. For me, a lot of the fun of a heist movie is in knowing exactly what should happen so you can watch it unravel at the end. However, this show is more about the characters in action and seeing them reacting to things, so it works out. This is all set in a future that borrows intelligently from futures that we're all familiar with. There are space colonies that could have come right out of Gundam, and there are spaceships that would fit comfortably next to those from Cowboy Bebop or Outlaw Star. This is good. There's no time in this for a lot of complicated world building. It's an action story, so it focuses on its strengths. The tone does grow darker as the series reaches its conclusion, particularly as various vendettas and such all come to a head. It's actually one of the things that impressed me most about the show, is that it runs headlong towards its ending, pulling characters along with it. Is it Cowboy Bebop? Of course not. Nothing is. As an action-adventure heist story, though, it does execute that genre perfectly. 